Our scripture reading comes to us this morning from the Hebrew Scriptures, the first book of Samuel, the first chapter, and I'm going to begin reading with the ninth verse. After they had eaten and drunk in Shiloh, Hannah rose. Now Eli the priest was sitting on the seat beside the doorpost of the temple of the Lord. Hannah was deeply distressed and prayed to the Lord and wept bitterly. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look upon the affliction of your servant and remember me and not forget your servant, but will give to your servant a son, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life, and no razor shall touch his head. As she continued praying before the Lord, Eli observed her mouth. Hannah was speaking in her heart, only her lips moved, and her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli took her to be a drunken woman. And Eli said to her, How long will you go on being drunk? Put your wine away from you. But Hannah answered, No, my lord, I am a woman troubled in spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I have been praying and pouring out my soul before the Lord. Do not regard your servant as a worthless woman, for all along I have been speaking out of my great anxiety and vexation. Then Eli answered, go in peace, and the God of Israel grant your petition that you have made to him. And she said, let your servant find favor in your eyes. Then the woman went her way and ate, and her face was no longer sad. They rose early in the morning and worshiped before the Lord. Then they went back to their house in Ramah. And Elkanah knew his wife, Hannah, and the Lord remembered her. And in due time, Hannah conceived and bore a son. And she called his name Samuel, for she said, I have asked for him from the Lord. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts upon the scripture be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Tell me if you can relate to this experience that I had the other day. I stopped into the Honeydew Donut Shop just outside the Rotary in Wakefield. And when I walked through the doors, I discovered that there were about eight to ten people standing in line. So you know what I did? I got back in my car and I left. I don't know about you, but I hate it when I, hate, when I have to wait and wait and wait. I hate it when I'm in the grocery store and I have to wait because someone in the line in front of me is convinced that the Oreo cookies are supposed to be on sale. <laughs> I hate it when I call an 800 number and wait for a half an hour only to end up speaking to someone from Bangladesh who I just can't understand. I hate the long lines that you have to stand in at the post office when the time comes to mail your Christmas packages. Yes, I'll admit it, I hate it when I have to wait and wait and wait. How about you? Most people don't like to wait. That's because we live in an age where we want what we want and we don't want it tomorrow or a week from tomorrow. We want it now. The same thing is true when it comes to our relationship with God. We don't want God to answer our prayers tomorrow or a week from tomorrow. We want God to answer our prayers now. That was certainly true for a businessman who was in the middle of negotiating this really big merger that had the potential to earn him several million dollars. Well, the businessman decided he wasn't going to take any chances. So he went into this really big cathedral and sat down next to another man who was also there to pray. The businessman listened as the man sitting next to him bowed his head and said, Lord, I don't know what I'm going to do. I just lost my job and I don't even have enough money to feed the kids. When the businessman heard that, he shook his head. He then took a $100 bill out of his wallet and gave it to the man who was sitting next to him. 
Then as the man sat there in stunned silence with a hundred dollar bill, the businessman bowed his head and began to pray. Lord, he said, now that I have your undivided attention, how about that merger? <laughs> yes, sometimes we even get impatient when it comes to our relationship with God. We don't want God to answer our prayers tomorrow or a week from tomorrow, but sometimes that's what happens. You pray and you pray, but nothing happens. So you pray some more and you keep on praying until you eventually get to the point where you feel the same way the psalmist felt when he cried out, how long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? Hannah may have felt that way when she was praying for a son. Hannah prayed and prayed, but nothing happened. But Hannah didn't let that get her down. She didn't give up. She kept on praying, and she prayed and prayed, and then after praying for several years, her prayer was finally answered. Her prayer was answered when her son Samuel was born. Now here's a question for you. It kind of perplexes me. Why did God make Hannah wait? And then after making her wait, why did God choose that particular moment to finally answer her prayer? Why not a year before or a year later? Why that particular moment? And why that particular moment after she had been praying for years and years? Well, if you want to know the answer to that question, you have to understand the difference between chronos time and kairos time. Chronos and kairos are two Greek words that have to deal with different kinds of time. Chronos, or chronological time, is what we live with every day. It's the time that is measured by the ticking of a grandfather clock. Chronos time says that there are exactly 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour, 24 hours in a day, and 365 days in a year. That's what we're used to, chronos time. However, when it comes to God and prayer, you're not dealing with chronos time. What you're actually dealing with is kairos time. The essence of kairos time can be seen in a wonderful passage from the book of Ecclesiastes, one that I'm sure that all of you have heard many times before. It's a passage that has brought comfort to people over the years, and it begins with the words, for everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. Kairos time says that there is a time for everything under heaven. And God is the one who knows when the time is right for everything under heaven. Not you, not me, or anyone else. So God is the one who knew when the time was right for Hannah to give birth. And God knows when the time is right for your prayers to be answered. Another difference between Kronos and Kairos time can be seen in a story about a father who scolded his son one day when the son came home late from school. The father was convinced that the walk from the school to their house should only take 20 minutes, and he decided to prove it. So the next day, he went to the school and made the walk home with his son. When they finally arrived at the house, the father turned to his wife and admitted that he had been wrong. 20 minutes was enough time to walk from the school to his house, he said. But then he added, I forgot to consider some important things, like a side trip to follow a trail of ants, or a stop to watch a man change a flat tire, or the time it takes to twirl around half a dozen telephone poles, or the time it takes for a boy to get acquainted with a couple of stray dogs. Kairos time. That's what God is all about. And life is always better when you embrace 
kairos time. That's because chronos time is all about schedules and the stress that goes along with keeping those schedules. It's all about running here and there to get things done. Kairos time, on the other hand, is all about faith and being ready for the blessings and uh, the grace-filled moments and the miracles that God will bring into your life when the time is right. That's what happened a few years ago out in Franklin, Massachusetts. It happened when three-year-old Ryan Bima made an amazing discovery while he was playing in his backyard. What he discovered was so amazing that It was all over the news when it happened. Ryan was digging in the dirt in his backyard when he discovered a pair of wedding rings. The wedding rings had actually been in the ground for 33 years. Joan Mulligan, the original owner of the house, lost the rings back in 1976 while doing some gardening in her backyard. Ryan discovered those wedding rings even though eight truckloads of dirt had recently been removed from the yard. When Joan Mulligan received the phone call from Ryan's mother, she couldn't believe it. She was so thrilled she gave Ryan $50. But here's the best most amazing part of the story. One of the reasons Joan Mulligan was so thrilled is that she now had time to have those wedding rings repaired and made ready. Ready for what, you ask? Ready for the 50th wedding anniversary that she and her husband were going to celebrate in just a couple of months. For everything, there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. Kairos time says that it wasn't a coincidence that Ryan discovered those two wedding rings at that particular moment. Kairos time says that he discovered those two wedding rings at that particular moment because the time was right. So when it comes to prayer and your prayers aren't being answered, you can do one of two things. You can live according to chronos time, in which case you'll probably end up bowing your head and saying along with the psalmist, how long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? You can do that, or you can live according to kairos time, in which case you'll bow your head with the psalmist and say to yourself, wait for the Lord, be strong, And let your hearts take courage. Ye wait for the Lord. Amen.